Okay, um, 66A and 66B are trapezoids and kites, neither of which are parallelograms. So everything we've done so far has been a parallelogram, which means opposite sides are parallel, right? Um, these are not parallelograms. So keep that in mind as you go through today. It's a slightly different setup for these figures. First one that we're going to talk about is the trapezoid. And a trapezoid, um, this is a very key word here. It's a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of what kind of sides? Parallel. Okay. Um, so if you look at this picture on the left, those two sides would be parallel. The other two are not and cannot be. Okay. You can only have one pair of parallel. Um, the other two are called your legs. So the two that are not parallel are the legs. And then the two that are parallel are your bases. And then the two angles that fall on the same base are called base angles. So these two together would be base angles. Um, and then these two together would be base angles. Okay, and that is a trapezoid. Um, this trapezoid over here, we'll see if you can come up with a name. This trapezoid has um, two legs that are congruent. Any guesses what we call that? Isosceles. It's isosceles. Okay, so this is an isosceles trapezoid. Um, <clears throat> meaning it's going to have congruent legs. And those congruent legs have to be your non-parallel uh, sides. Okay. So there's a theorem, 619, that says if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is going to be congruent. And it's not like a parallelogram. In parallelograms, opposites are congruent. This is not going to be the case ever. You will never have opposite angles that are the same in a trapezoid. Instead, um, this is congruent here. With this being the two sides that are congruent and these being the parallel sides, what it's saying is um, these two angles down here would be the same. Okay, so your base angles and then these two base angles would also be the same. Okay. Questions so far? Okay, so let's look at example one here. It says um, RSTU is an isosceles trapezoid. Note they marked that for you, right? Congruent sides, parallel bases. Um, and it says the measure of angle S is 75. So this angle right here is 75 degrees. Um, what are the measures of the three remaining angles? So I feel like one of these comes pretty quick. R is 75, right? So your base angles are the same. <clears throat> this one's 75. How do we find U and T? Yeah, Chris. Okay, so that's one way you could do it. You could take 360, because we know it's a quadrilateral. Quadrilaterals always add up to 360. Take away the two 75s. We know these two are going to be the same. Um, so then you would just take that number and divide by two. Okay, so that's one way. Is there another way? Oh. Or you have a question? What were you going to say? It's 105 for UNC. It's 105, yeah. Anyone know a different way you could get there? Right. Um, so the other way that you could do it, and you don't have to do it this way. I think this way is easier, but you can totally do it the way that Chris said too. These two angles here are same side interiors because we know those lines are parallel, right? If the lines are parallel, then those are supplementary. That will be the case in every trapezoid. That's not just an isosceles trapezoid. That's every trapezoid. So you could just do 180 minus 75. So 105 would be the measure of both of those. <clears throat> 105 and 105. Okay. Um, and here's, I just told you the answer to this, but if it's not an isosceles trapezoid, are these two still supplementary? So if you had a trapezoid that looks like this instead. 
right? Would X and Y be supplementary? Yeah. Would A and B be supplementary? Yes. So as long as they are same side interiors like that, they will still be supplementary. Every trapezoid will have two sets of supplementary angles, okay? <clears throat> Um, so that's yes, if you want to write that in. Example two, it's asking what X and Y are. If DE is parallel to BC, okay, they tell us that's true, and that is um, an isosceles triangle. So this whole figure is an isosceles triangle. Um, how do we find X or Y then? If I know my vertex angle is 32, you should be able to find those two. Those two will be congruent, right? Um, so if I just call them both y, then 2y plus 32 should equal 180. So take away the 32, 2y is going to equal, what is that, 148. Um, so then divide by 2, and we would get y is 74, okay? So that means both of these. This one is 74, this one is 74. How do I find X? What? Yeah, they're supplementary, right? This is same side interiors, if you look at these two angles. Um, so 180 minus 74, or 106 would be your X, okay? So basically what happened was you got an isosceles trapezoid because you had the isosceles triangle, right? So these would be the same, which means these are the same and the other two are the same. Questions on that? All right. Um, Next theorem that we're going to talk about is theorem 620. You don't need to worry about the number. But what it says is if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then the diagonals are congruent. So because we know these two are the same and it's parallel and parallel, then we know that TR is congruent to SU. Okay? Um, and I want you to think about how that goes then. If TR is congruent to SU, it's actually gonna break it into those two are the same and these two are the same, right? That's angle addition postulate, the two parts equal the whole. Um, do you see, there's four triangles there. What kind of triangles are we looking at? What? Um, there are two scalene, but there's also two isosceles, right? So think about this triangle is an isosceles triangle. Um, this triangle is also an isosceles triangle. But if you look at it right now, this angle, so we know those two angles are the same, right? Base angles and an isosceles triangle are the same, but we also have alternate interiors. Do you see the alternate interiors? This angle here with the one up there. And because we know base angles are the same, that's the same. So all four of those are actually the same measure. This is where, um, remember how it was like, do, is there an AAA theorem? With congruence, there is not, but with similarity, there is. Those two triangles are proportional to each other. Um, because these will be vertical angles, so we know those are the same, okay? Um, so that's what, like, matches up about those two triangles. But then if you look at the other two triangles right now, they're just mirror images of each other. Do you see that? This angle here, those are vertical also, okay? That means that we're going to zoom way in because this gets messy otherwise. Those two angles are the same, and these two angles are the same. 
So there's a whole lot of congruence um, going on in an isosceles trapezoid like that. So just pay attention to what you got there. All right, last thing that we're gonna talk about in this lesson anyway, um, is the trapezoid mid-segment theorem. Remember we did the triangle mid-segment theorem? Triangle mid-segment was if we cut this side into equal parts and we cut this side into equal parts. Do you remember the relationship between these two lines? One is half or one is double, depending on what perspective you look at it. And what was the other thing? They are what? They're parallel, right? Okay, so it was like if this is x, then this is 2x. Or if this is x, then that's 1 half x. You can think of it however you want. Um, trapezoid mid-segment theorem is very, very similar to that. Um, but now we're going to set it up slightly differently because it's not a triangle anymore. We have three parallel lines now. So it will be true that all three of these are parallel. And then if you label this A, B, C, D, E, and F. Um, the relationship is similar. You're still cutting things in half, um, but it's more like finding an average. Like that middle segment is the average of the top and bottom segments. So what happens is we would say that middle segment, F, C, is half. How do you find an average? You add what you have and divide by how many you have, right? So we're gonna add AB and ED and cut it in half, right? Divide by two. Um, that will get you the middle segment, your mid segment, okay? Um, so let me show you real quick on just a very basic trapezoid and then I'll show you how it works with expression. So if this is a mid segment and I tell you this is eight, and this is 12, and we wanna find x, okay? You're gonna take the sum of the two bases and cut it in half. So basically we're saying x equals half of eight plus 12. So half of 20, x would be 10, okay? How do you set it up then if we have these expressions instead? How would you set this one up? What's the standalone? Which segment? It would be the x plus two, right? The mid segment is always the one that's by itself. So it's gonna be x plus two equals half of what? Four x minus two, right? It's four x minus 10 plus the eight, but really that's four x minus two simplified. Okay, um, I feel like majority of my students want to distribute right here. I don't, but I will because I feel like you guys want to. Um, I would rather, and maybe you're like me in this, I would rather just multiply by two here and multiply by two here so I'm getting rid of my fractions. You'll see in the homework, if you distribute, you're gonna get decimals or fractions a lot more, um, which is not a problem. You're welcome to do it that way. I just don't do it that way. Um, but I will distribute for the sake of the majority. Um, so if we distribute the one half, it would be x plus two equals two x, half of two is one. Um, so move your x over, take away your x here, you get x, add your one, you get three. So we get x equals three. Now on a problem like this, I think it's super helpful just to plug it in and double check. So if I plug this in, three plus two gets me five up here. Four times three is 12 minus 10 gets me two right here. Does it seem rational to have two, five, and eight be our three links? Do you see a little pattern there? They have a difference of three each time, right? The difference between them, you want that. You want their difference between them to be the same because we're finding an average essentially, okay? Um, so if you wanna check it, that would be the way to check it. 
Um, technically, you don't have to check it, but it's recommended. Any questions on that? Okay.